you're essentially throwing money to the wind if you're not tracking conversions in your Google AdWords account. The only way to thoroughly understand the performance of a Google AdWords campaign is to know what is converting into leads for your business. In this video, we're going to go over the foundations of what conversions to track in the first place. We're not going to go into the fine technical details of setting up the conversions as I've already created videos on this and have linked to those in the description below. But what we'll do is give that high level view of what needs to be tracked in the first place to get a full glimpse, a complete picture of the performance of your ads so that you can optimize them over time and get a better cost per lead. Lastly, make sure to sit through to the end of this video because at the end, I'm gonna go over the holy grail of tracking. Um, this is something that nobody really seems to be talking about because it's a little bit more complex. A lot of agencies stop at just tracking leads, phone calls, and forms, uh, but they don't go all the way to the sale. So stick around to the end, and I'm gonna go over how to track that and uh, enjoy the rest of this video. Cheers, guys. Okay, so here you're gonna see an overly simplified version of a user journey. So someone's path to your website into your phone or to your email inbox. So they start on Google and they make a search for the services that they're looking for and then they see your ad, they click that, they go to your website or landing page and then they reach out by phone or by form submission. Now they can actually convert without even going to your website. So that's the front end in Google AdWords and that's done through extensions. But ultimately, what we want to display here is that we want to pull all this information back into Google AdWords and display that right next to the metrics that you see in your campaigns. This way you can see exactly what is leading to conversions and what's working and what's not. Just like what you see here, you can go to search terms reports and go all the way down to the search query and keyword that led to a certain conversion action. At the top, you'll see phone call. That's a phone call from a phone extension on our campaign. And then phone call all website data. That's actually a phone call when they went to the website and decided to call that way. Um, further down, you're gonna see an appointment request and then another phone call from the website. But this is really important to set it up like this because you'll be able to see um, which conversions are, are converting better than others. And this is gonna inform how you go about optimizing your campaign. The first conversion action that we're going to discuss is on the front end of your Google AdWords campaign. So before users even click to your website, they can convert using extensions. So specifically a call extension or a call ad or a location extension is going to have click to call features that allow users to click the icon or the ad itself. And it's going to prompt them to call directly to your business or your client's business. And by default, Google is going to label this as a click to call in their click type uh, segment. If you segment your campaigns, you can see this, but it's only gonna be labeled under all conversions, not conversions itself. Uh, additionally, it's not gonna track how long people are actually on the call for. So whenever you're using call only ads, call extensions or location extensions, you wanna make sure that you set up a call conversion action. And you can do this by going to your conversion section and creating a conversion, phone calls, and selecting calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. Set this up, and then uh, specifically when you're creating a call extension, make sure that you associate it with the correct conversion type by going to a conversion action down there and collecting uh, or selecting the correct conversion type. Slight problem with the location extensions is they also allow for people to click the get driving directions icon on the ads, and you're gonna pay for this click and it's gonna open up a map on their mobile device and um, just give them directions to your location, which is also valuable, of course, depending on what business you're in, um, but it leaves a gap in tracking because you can't tell whether that click to get directions actually led them to come into your business and whether they turned into a sale because all that tracking happens offline. So keep this in mind when running location extensions. Uh, for most industries, this won't play a big part, but I do know for specifically um, uh, iPhone repair, so this is big because a lot of people won't even call. They'll just get directions, go into the business, and although that was created from your AdWords campaign, then you can't really tell. You can't tell if that came from SEO or AdWords and whether they even converted in the first place. Next up, let's talk about website conversions. So this is the back end of your Google AdWords. 
Um, so this is when people actually click to your website. There's a few different things they can do depending on the device that you're using. On all devices, they can always submit a form. So this one is really easy. Uh, when you set up a form submission, you just click the website option and it's going to give you two tags to place on your website. One is a global site tag. Um, depending on the theme and the platform that you're using, if you're using WordPress, you just go into the appearance uh, editor and then the theme header options. Um, and you'll place the code snippet right before the slash head section. Um, that's the global site tag and that's placed all across your entire website. And also, even if you're using WordPress, but you're also using a visual page builder, sometimes it's going to be the case, as you see here on the left, I have an image of my visual page builder's options section, which gives you the opportunity to put the uh, to inject the code directly in there to your entire site. The next is your event snippet, which is placed on the web page uh, after, so after they submit a form. Send people to a form or a thank you page and put the event snippet on that page. So whenever someone loads it, it counts that as a conversion. So the, the global uh, basically tells Google that, hey, someone came from Google AdWords. And then the event says, hey, they, they came to this page and converted into a lead. So to conceptualize the second conversion action, let's use a scenario. Let's say you're on a desktop device and you're searching for plumbers near me. And you see an ad at the top and you click it and you go to the website and you determine that the company looks great and you want to reach out to them. And you see their phone number at the very top, you whip out your phone and you type in the number and you call them. Uh, in that scenario, how does that company determine whether that call came from Google AdWords? Um, the way you do this is in multiple different ways, but one way you can do it is using a third party call tracking software. And what this software is going to do is give you a tracking number. This tracking number can just be placed on the website. And now whenever people call that number, you can route it to your actual phone number. And it's going to record, if you want it to record, the conversation, as well as how long they're on the phone call for. And if you're using CallRail, you can send that information directly back into Google AdWords and count that as a conversion. If you want a free option, you can actually just use Google AdWords by creating a conversion action calls from website and plugging in exactly what your phone number looks like on that site and creating a snippet of code. This code at the bottom there is what you want to copy and place on every page, just like the global site tag that you did for the form submissions. And what this is going to do is Google is going to do exactly what the third party tools are doing. It's going to create a Google forwarding number with your same um, area address or like 401, 501, 603, it doesn't really matter. It's going to create a mock number, a tracking forwarding number. It's going to overlay that onto your actual number when someone comes from Google Ads. And now when they pick up their phone, they're going to type in that Google forwarding number and that's going to forward them without any knowledge on the person's part to your phone number. The only difference is Google is going to record how long they're actually on the phone call for and then label that as a conversion. Uh, the difference between that and third party tools is Google doesn't give you the ability to record the actual call. But either way, if you're looking for a free version, then Google is the way to go. Next, we want to track clicks to your mobile phone number on your website. So let's say someone's using a phone and they click your ad, they go to your website and let's say you have a click the call feature so your phone number is clickable and it will prompt someone to open a call option now the way you set this up in the first place is by either placing HTML code on your button or link your your phone number link uh, and that HTML code as seen here is TEL colon your phone number um, the problem here is even though you have the Google forwarding number or your third-party tool uh, dynamically inserting a tracking number over this existing number it's not changing that HTML code so if they click it it's gonna just call your actual landline rather than the tracking number itself so this isn't a problem if you have a third-party tracking and you have a, um, a landing page other than your main website in that scenario just take your tracking number and place it there as the click to call um, don't don't use your actual phone number but the problem is if you're dynamically inserting that tracking phone number on, let's say, your main website, 
then if someone clicks it, even though it, it's displaying your tracking number, it's still going to activate that HTML tag, which is calling your actual number. So that's not trackable. Um, unfortunately, you can only track the click itself in this scenario, but either way, you wanna set up an event in Google Analytics that tracks someone who clicks your button or your link, um, and then you can import this information back into Google AdWords. But as mentioned, it's generally always good to A, build uh, your PPC website separate from your main website, as well as use third-party tracking software such as CallRail. Further, I just want to mention that with that event tracking, so you can track clicks to a, a phone number on your site, but you can also do the same with pretty much any other section of your website. So if you have a certain button or scheduling, uh, you, can, you can do that as well. So as you can see here, we have a scheduled intro. So someone actually became a lead, so they opted in. And then the next page, instead of just sending them to a thank you page, we actually put an acuity scheduling uh, option for them to schedule an intro class. So they schedule it, um, and then that routes that information to Google Analytics, and then we imported that back into Google AdWords. So also note that we're not counting this as a conversion. Um, so you can either count them if you look in the far right as a conversion or not. The reason why we don't want to count this as a conversion is because they've already converted. So we don't want to double convert and dilute our campaign's information. Instead, we just want to see that information in the back end here just so we can get more information on how users are moving through our funnel. The same thing was done for the uh, calls from a thank you page, the second to the bottom action there, which is not recorded under conversions. But this is when they go to that second page with the scheduling app on it. Um, it also has a dynamically inserted phone number and we're counting that conversion as separate from the rest because that just means they want a little bit extra support or something like that. We just don't want to double convert that person. Um, but we still want that information regardless to see if maybe our scheduling app isn't very intuitive and people are a lot of people are calling instead of scheduling. That will be some more information for you to move forward with your campaign. Next up, you just want to confirm that all your conversion tracking is set up properly before launching your campaign. So you can do this simply by looking at your status column there. And if it's recording conversions, obviously, then it's working. If you see no recent conversions, most of the time, this means that it is set up correctly. However, it's not always the case that it is that way. But I'll show you in a second how you can absolutely confirm that. Um, if you see unverified after 24 hours of setting things up, it probably means that it's not set up correctly. And in that case, I would reach out to Google AdWords support and ask them about setting things up the correct way. And they're usually pretty helpful. And then also it won't be working correctly if you see an active tag um, or just doesn't exist altogether. Um, if you see unverified within the first couple of hours just give it some time because it takes up to 24 hours to um, for google to verify your tag is working correctly um, so i would highly suggest investing a little bit in self clicks so set up a mock campaign for either your client or for yourself uh, a separate campaign that has a very low budget reduced bids only a few specific keywords that you're targeting and um, run this and then um, basically make a search on Google and then click your own ad and then go to your landing page and then figure out whether your conversions are working properly. So just fill out a form submission, go and click an ad again and then uh, call your phone, see that the dynamic uh, number insertion is working properly if that's something that you're using. Um, and just to fully 100% confirm that your conversions are working properly. So. Um, also give it uh, 15 minutes for those conversions to show up in your Google AdWords account. But the reason why you want to set up a, a mock campaign is A, so you can reduce the bids that you're actually paying. I mean, you're going to pay $10, but it's worth it to have the security of knowing that your conversions are working because it's the most important part of an AdWords campaign. And um, B, just so the conversions that you do register don't uh, don't show up in your actual campaigns and dilute the data so you don't you get an accurate reading of your cost per conversion um, if you're not if you're performing these ads in an area that is outside of your own area let's say you're an agency you're running this for a client then 
set up that campaign on the settings so that it sh uh, shows for people searching for that location. So uh, those ads will show to you even though you're out of state. And in that scenario, just click their ads and go through the process and go through the conversion setting. Um, so yes, it will cost some money to do so, but it's entirely worth it. Last up, we're going to talk about the holy grail of all online marketing. The great thing about online marketing is that you can measure and track pretty much everything. Uh, the challenge with local businesses is that a lot of the events and actions that happen are offline. So if a local business has their online systems in place and their team is utilizing them to their full extent, um, then you can actually take those offline actions, put them in an online system, and then route that information back into Google AdWords. And what you can do with that is track all the way down to a sale. So you can track down to a sale and pull that revenue information back into Google AdWords. And that amount of information gives you a huge leg up because at that point, you'll know exactly down to the penny how much you're putting in and how much you're put getting out. So essentially, it's just a machine at that point. It's a revenue producing machine. Um, a lot of people stay away from this because it's quite complex it's quite technical but if you can figure this out it's huge it's a it's a game changer so if you have a CRM a customer relationship management software this is going to keep track of your leads so phone calls and form submissions from your website from all different sources Google Ads Facebook SEO um, for specifically Google Ads some CRMs will integrate directly with it uh, in that case, you want to generate a Google Click ID from people coming from Google AdWords to your website. And this Google Click ID is going to carry over. So when they make a phone call or a contact form submission, it's going to create a lead automatically in your CRM. And that lead is going to have that Click ID associated with it. So when you're moving that person through your sales process and moving them through the pipeline in your CRM, and they get to the sales point, and it shows that they were sold on a job, that information for the revenue is gonna be pulled immediately back into Google AdWords because your CRM can associate that Google Click ID. This is huge, once again, a lot of people stay away from it because it can take some amount of development. I have done it with C uh, Zoho CRM. However, Zoho doesn't seem to be pulling in that Click ID automatically. So as you can see in this dashboard area in Zoho, um, there are no conversions, however, there have actually been conversions. So this is something I need to figure out or we need to switch CRMs. Either way, look to see if yours has it or if you're looking for a CRM, look for one that directly integrates with Google AdWords. So that's it guys for the video. I really hope you got some value out of this. I also hope it wasn't too conceptual. Um, let me know in the comments below if it was a little bit too high level, just not enough visuals, just so I know for next time. Um, if you want technical guides, definitely just look on YouTube. There's already a bunch of stuff on that. I might make my own videos on it, and if so, you'll get the notification for it as long as you're subscribed, so hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, click a like. Put a comment below just because it helps the algorithm out, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.